Hi there, <clears throat> and welcome to the 45th Octoprint on Air. I'm your host, Gina Heuske, still no B in that name. And yeah, so it's been a while since we had one of these, and I'm going to explain why it has been that long uh, uh, briefly as well. But uh, first of all, a short outline of what we are going to talk about today. Uh, it's pretty much usual stuff. I will be telling you what I've been up to the, uh, since the past, um, uh, since the last one of these. Uh, then we'll have, uh, uh, then and, and what I'll, I'll be doing next, right? And then we'll have a quick look at the stats. And uh, yeah, finally, there would usually now uh, be a Q&A segment. But the problem is uh, no one handed in any new questions for the Q&A segment. Uh, before so uh yeah we'll just uh check the live chat then see if anyone watching this live and not as a recording that will be published later um uh, has has any kind of question that i'm able to answer quickly and if not then it might end up being a bit on the shorter side as usual but yeah so that all depends on you the audience so we'll have to see how that goes. Also, if anyone watching this right now could quickly chime up in the live chat uh, that they are watching this, it would be lovely because right now YouTube is showing me that we have pretty much no viewers and that is a bit weird because I'm pretty sure that there should be at least one or two. So, um, yeah, so just as a bit of a feedback uh, thing there, but yeah, no, no rush. Anyhow, um, yeah, yeah. Um, Sorry, I was just distracted by the stats are really weird on this thing recently. I, I remember that before that we already had this issue with this with, with the last stream and uh, that I don't know something like 10 people were like, yeah, yeah, I'm watching this and YouTube was telling me it was one person. So I'm not sure what is going on there. But anyhow, uh, I'm also streaming this from a new setup, actually, because I uh, got a new mainboard and a new CPU and had to set up the whole system again and all that. So I hope everything is working like it should and you can hear me like you uh, should normally be able to hear me and that the image is good and that the voice is good and everything is good and all of that. Yeah, so but um, it looked good in the uh, during prep <laughs> when I did a quick test recording. So I'm hoping that everything will be fine. Okay, so what I've been up to. Uh, you surely did not miss that. Uh, not only were there two more release candidates since I last uh, did the did the last one of these, uh, 1.8.0 RC4 and 1.8.0 RC5, but also we saw the stable release of uh, 1.8.0 go live last no this this Tuesday. Um, so uh, RC4 was released on April 5th and RC5 was released on April 12th and. Uh, as I said, the stable version was released now on Tuesday, on, on May 17th. So uh, all in all, this put, put us at a uh, release candidate phase again of uh, two months, or rather actually a bit over two months. Um, because the first uh, RC, I think, was released on uh, March 13th or something. And uh, yeah, the final, final stable release then had happened on May 17th. Um, and yeah, this long RC phase, once again, seems to have led to a quite stable release. So uh, apart from one issue uh, that apparently happens with certain uh, uh, Android devices with uh, Octo4a, so these, this, this Android project by Philip, um, I'm not aware of any issues. And for that, I've already pre prepared a hotfix as well, as, as did Philip. So let's hope that uh, the combination of both at least will make it work for everything again. And, and uh, I will probably go for 181 release with this hotfix and also a security issue that I got reported today and fixed as well, which is minor, um, by uh, next week. Uh, speaking about security issues, uh, during the final release candidate, so while RC5 was already out, I got uh, three vulnerabilities reported via a security platform, uh, two cross-site scripting uh, issues and one um, open redirect. The cross-site scripting issues were uh, in the login uh, form and also on the webcam stream tester, so when you uh, when you when you configure the webcam stream URL as an admin, and then you you put a, put in your URL, and then you click on the test button, that that thing that then just popped up this test uh, uh, image that had the vulnerability, and uh, yeah, the open redirect was also on the login dialog. So open redirect in this case means you could um, 
have Octoprint redirect the user after a successful login to some other page. That doesn't mean that any credentials were transferred, but it means that uh, that yeah that for example an attacker could set up some kind of page that looks like Octoprint and that asks again for the login or something like that and via this launch a phishing attack against the uh, against the target. And the two cross-site scripting things uh, were able to, uh, if you had the remember cookie set, uh, could uh, extract that cookie and then um, pass it on to an attacker, which in turn then, if your instance was reachable by them, could uh, access your instance with your credentials. Well, uh, all of these issues have now been fixed in 1.8.0 and I've also secured the cookies further so that can no longer happen in any shape or form with further XSS vulnerabilities that might still somewhere lurk in the code. Um, but um, uh, since at the time the, 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 the situation was still a bit uh, iffy because of said remember me cookie both both uh, cross-site scripting uh, vulnerabilities were classified uh, as high severity and uh, the open redirect one was classified as low severity because yeah i mean you can launch a phishing attack with that but that still needs the phishing attack to be successful to do anything so it's not an not a real threat in and of, in and of itself but yeah uh, a big thank you to uh charlie sean and jim here because uh i'll i prepared the fixes for these in private on a private fork of octoprint because i did not want to have them made publicly known be be before i had a fix for this available and they uh, took it on themselves to to test everything and make sure that i did not break anything else so they were basically uh, a very, very small testing group for the, the never released RC6, so to speak. And that helped a lot and uh, yeah, made it so that I could uh, push the button on, on, on pushing out 180 with, with, with less anxiety that I otherwise would have had probably. Okay, um, so uh, as I said, uh, about the nature about these vulnerabilities. Yes, they could have been used, or at least the two cross-site scripting ones could have been used to um, steal your Octoprint credentials. But in order for that to work, uh, first of all, an attacker would have known to target you and and uh, successfully target you either with a preferred, prepared li malicious link uh, that they would have somehow have made you click on or uh, for, the, for the login one or um, uh, with uh, yeah, by talking you basically into into uh, posting a malicious string into the webcam stream configuration. So in both cases, you as an admin would have had also to have your guard down in the moment. And additionally, they would only be able to actually actually use what they were able to steal in any shape or form. If you have your Octoprint instance publicly available on the internet without any further restrictions, without any further guarding. Which brings me to the fact that you really, really, really should not be doing that as I have been repeatedly been saying and have repeatedly pointed out and have been very much actively fighting against for at least four years now. Um, as in uh, hardened Octoprint further, made Octoprint warn you if you're doing it, if you're, if you're accessing it from any kind of port forwarded scenario or something like that. Because, yeah. I know most of you who are hearing this by now are probably uh, thinking I'm starting to sound like a broken record about this, uh, but th th this is probably because I am, in fact. Um, but uh, considering how many new users uh, start, uh, yeah, start using Octoprint every single day, apparently, and uh, how many people are still constantly asking about how to do port forwarding and such, let me qu quickly um climb up on my soapbox once again and explain that um you do not you never 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 do not publicly expose something that has control over heating elements over physical things to the public internet you might just put a port forward in your router and think hey nobody knows my ip nothing can happen but People will scan every single IP that comes online in this world, put them in databases. These databases can be searched. One of them is showed in IO. Getting a pro account on that with, uh, with more or less unlimited search capabilities costs you next to nothing. I have one, in fact. And um, yeah, you can be found and you will be found. And if you have your instance not properly locked down, and if, you, for example, you are now running an old version or something like that, stuff can happen. So. 
Considering that you have Octoprint connected to something like your printer with physical heaters that are capable of reaching 300 or more degrees Celsius, have moving parts that are powered by more or less powerful stepper motors, stuff like this, just please do not put it on the public internet. There are safe ways to, uh, to remotely access your instance from when you are not at home. Um, VPNs, for example, reverse proxies in front of it with additional authentication or one of the many uh, cloud-based remote access plugins that are available for Octoprint. And there is even a blog post if you go to the Octoblog or if you just type uh, remote, safe remote access Octoprint into Google, you will immediately find this blog post. And um, yeah, please heed this warning. It's not that I'm wearing a tinfoil hat in my spare time, but it's just that I know how to search for stuff like this. And if I know it as a, as a male programmer with a, a, a bit of interest in, in security, someone who actually wants to cause you harm and does some research will surely be able to find you. So don't put this stuff on the public internet, please. Thanks. Yeah, that was my soapbox. Uh, okay, so, so much for uh, 180. What else did happen? Uh, at the uh, start of, uh, of April, I also uh, virtually attended PyCon.de, which was in Berlin, but also online. And um, I there also gave another iteration of my talk, How to Deal with Toxic People. And the recording of that is also now on YouTube. And I will also link it uh, here in the, in the final recording of this one. Uh, so you can find it. Uh, I met some old, some new friends, had some very, very, very uh, interesting discussions about all things Python and also some things not Python and more like open source or uh, Corona, of course. I mean, that's normal, right? Um, and things like this. And it uh, was, was really, really good. Uh, and of course, I also watched the one or other very, very interesting talk and uh, got some fresh and new ideas uh, of stuff to test out, of new libraries to check out and also how to, yeah, how to do project management and stuff like that. So that is good. All in all, it was a really great conference and I really wish I could have been there in person, but given the situation that we still have, like with a pandemic going on, even though next to no one seems to care anymore about it because it's been going on too long and people have are simply no longer capable of caring. Um, I didn't feel safe uh, to, about, first of all, the train travel up to Berlin and then also staying in a hotel and all of that. So yeah, another one, another conference that I attended virtually. And I sure hope that come 2023, I might actually be able to attend one in person again, but well, time will tell. And what else did happen during April? Something that I'm not so happy about that it did happen, but it was necessary that it happened and I'm glad that I did it. But uh, yeah, this is going to be a long segment now about mental health. Um, so by early April, uh, I so right actually right around the time that PyCon was happening, I noticed that I was really becoming a mess. So like I I was completely and utterly exhausted. I could not concentrate anymore. I was just constantly feeling like I was not getting anything done anymore, and like really on edge, uh, easily triggered, easily pulled, uh, pushed over the edge and, and, um, yeah. And, and becoming very emotional also as well, like irate. <laughs> and, uh, that is not like me usually. And, um, the reason for that was simply, I had way too much stuff on my hands at that moment. So I had Octoprint, I had the release candidate phase of Octoprint. I had uh, the usual maintenance stuff already working towards 1.9, uh, stuff that I had to think about for 2.0, uh, organizational stuff, tax, accounting, uh, taxes, accounting, uh, funding, sponsoring, what, whatever, all of this, um, community management, so, so the whole stuff on top of everything else. And uh, yeah, just basically too many balls in the air at the same time. And also too many commitments that I could not back out of. So for example, the talk that I promised to give at, at PyCon.de fell into this. And uh, uh, I also did a training right after that I had promised to do. And while uh, while it was something that also helped with funding, it, it was something that cost a lot of time, cost a lot of preparation and um, yeah, was a ton of stuff to do. And then finally, that was the final straw that broke the camel's back. I also got these three security issues uh, 
th th uh, vulnerabilities reported. And that was about right the time when I actually had planned to take a break. Um, and then that happened and I thought that now I cannot take the break and I have to fix this. And then I decided, you know what, I have to take this break now because otherwise I will have to fix me <laughs> anyhow. So, um, yeah, so I decided to push the fixes for the for the vulnerabilities with 180 stable instead of trying to do a hotfix for 1.7 and then do anything about one and and, and then figure out uh, how to how to hide this stuff in in in, in 180 RC6 or something like this so so instead I just said okay I'm going to do that with 180 at first I, w I I thought I will release 180 and then right away push 180 181 right behind it with the security fixes but then uh the the the, the mod team on on discord talked me out of that and and basically told me you know what just push it with 180 and if anything breaks you can always still push a, a hotfix 181 and, and don't have to do two releases right away so they were right with that and that also helped but anyhow yeah uh, what I did was uh, at the end of April, uh, when I noticed that I simply could not longer go, I could no longer work, I could no longer concentrate, I I was just constantly feeling like curling up into a fetal ball and putting my hand under, head under the under the, the blanket and, and, and simply ignoring the whole world. So um, that was the point where I decided enough is enough, I need to take a break now. So I took 2.5 two weeks off me time of uh, yeah I'm, I'm not calling it a vacation because it was anything but a vacation um it was more like yeah it was like well like i had fallen sick and needed to recover and pretty much this is also what happened so this is what i did i slept a whole ton i did this pc upgrade i had been putting off for way too long which admittedly is a bit of work but also was something that i felt like i wanted to do at the time so i figured it would be okay um I uh, played some games, but mostly I really just, yeah, was resting on the couch, watching YouTube, watching uh, TV stuff, movies, uh, series, things like that, and not really doing much, not really thinking much, just trying to recover. Uh, and I really wish I could say that from these 2.5 weeks, I ca I've come now back completely and fully recharged and full of energy and happy to tackle everything that life and Octoprint throw at me right away again. But nope, that is sadly not the case. And while I am, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of still circling the drain, so to speak, but at least I no longer have one leg already stuck in it. So that is good. Um, but it is... Something that now brings us into the what are the next steps section. Uh, it is something that cannot continue like this. So, um, or rather I cannot continue like this. I need to find a road back to sustainability. And that is something that I have also spent some time during this 2.5 weeks to think about how to achieve this. And also had some very um, productive discussions with the people on Discord about it. So really thanks for that and also thanks for yeah, putting my head back into the right space, so to speak. Um, uh, the thing is, with this whole circling the drain thing for me, this now has been a recurring theme for the past two years, at least. So it, I, I, I remember that right when the, when the pandemic started, the whole stress level, the whole workload just ramped up significantly. And back then I thought it was because a ton of people were now printing PPE and, and just sitting at home and not having to do much because of the lockdowns and all that. And that was because it was happening and that was going to be temporarily or something. The problem is it never ebbed down again. So, um, two years later or actually at this point yeah let's say two years later and it's still at this completely unsustainable level of of um action and and and, and yeah requests to me and uh constantly having to put out fires here and there and um, trying to figure out bug fixes, uh, helping people with with pull requests, and and, and 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 having to make decisions, and and also a lot of invisible stuff that most of you don't even see, because of course I also have to take care of a lot of 
financing and, 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 and administration and organization and stuff like that in the background. And actually also some things that I cannot even delegate to anyone, even if I wanted to, because it's simply stuff that I, I'm legally bound to do myself in Germany, or at least only have my tax, tax consultant do it. So, um, so yeah, that is a, that is a big factor. And, um, so the past two years, every single vacation was usually preceded by weeks, if not months, of feeling completely and utterly drained and not knowing what to do about it. And then the vacations were more like trying to get back to a zero uh, in, with regards to energy levels from a negative, from a net negative back to a zero instead of actually charging up into a positive range. So um, that is something that is not sustainable and I'm noticing it because the the frequency with which I find myself circling the drain as harshly as I'm doing now has decreased or rather the frequency has increased the intervals have decreased and uh, that that is something that I need to get in grips so um, I, I still really enjoy working on Octoprint and I feel like I've done something here that is uh, that is helping a ton of people that is um, that has also helped me a lot in learning and in, in growing as a person and also in some way as a leader. And um, I, I really want to continue to do this, but I need to find a way again to make it sustainable again, because right now it is causing significant harm to my health and that is not what I want. So... Um, as things are right now, way too much is hanging on decisions that I have to make, knowledge that only I have. And that means that I am constantly just like this overstressed bottleneck that is trying to help everyone and, and is trying to, to make sure everyone has the information they need and the, the answers they need and the, the, the support they need at any given time. And in the meantime, not even really getting... To complete my goals at all like i have not worked on on 2.0 in in half a year now again and that is something that is really bothering me because it means i do not feel even remotely like all this running forwards that i'm doing is actually moving me like i'm swimming up a, a roaring stream of white water and all i can do is manage to somehow stay in place but actually i, I if i'm if i'm honest to myself i'm getting pushed back uh inch by inch and that is just, uh, yeah, this, this is just so utterly depressing so and frustrating. So, um, as I said, that is something that needs to change for the sake of the project and also for the sake of my own health. And um, I actually happen to have an idea on how to go about this, although I cannot promise you that it will actually help. But I just saw that there was a question in the live chat, so let me quickly check that. Are there parts of Octoprint you would like to work on instead of being expected to work on them? Kind of make it a hobby again. Yeah, I mean, I, for example, the new com layer, but hmm, when? This is something that I really need to concentrate on for weeks uh, and or at least for one or two weeks at, at a point. And this is something that is simply impossible. Ever since the pandemic started, it's just been... And if I'm honest with that thing, that has also been under a very, very, very bad star all in all, because every time that I finally started making progress on that, something terrible happened. So the first time that I was starting to make real progress on the new com layer, uh, I was let go at the old job that was sponsoring all of Octoprint's development and had to start up the, the crowdfunding thing. And the next time that I actually got around to working on it and, and found a good footing in it and, and made good progress, I, uh, yeah, my, my, my 16 year long relationship terminated. And uh, you can imagine that this also wreaked some havoc with my productivity. The next time I actually found time for that, a pandemic hit. And um, yeah, well, so um, I'm, I'm sure as hell hoping that sometime I will actually be able to get this away and done and... Um, and yeah, and as, as Jim is now pointing out in a bit of a tongue in cheek, uh, um, uh, way it doesn't help micro center selling Ender three for $99 either. So the, the user, user numbers have skyrocketed. I, I see it in my tracking and, uh, that's just, I mean, that's awesome. That's absolutely amazing. And it makes me very, very proud that this project that I created is apparently having such an impact on people and that so many people are using it. And this is amazing. Don't get me wrong on this, but 
of course, it also means that there, we are now at a point where I alone simply no longer scale or the, the way I have been running this project simply no longer scales. And it took me long enough to realize that because, I, as I said, I was hoping it was just a temporary thing and that once the pandemic lulled out, it would also maybe die down again, at least once people return to work. <laughs> but apparently this isn't the case. So this is here to stay. So this means I now need to act in order to um, make sure this there is still a me in, uh, in, in, in the foreseeable future in this project. So um, here's what I've come up with. So first of all, the biggest problem that I currently see is that a lot of these things that I need to do is because only I have the knowledge to do them. And uh, remember that I mentioned that I did a training just before my break. Uh, and this training actually consisted of um, telling the development team of a client uh, a lot of stuff about the Octoprint internals, uh, giving them a walk through the code base and explaining them how everything fits together, um, architecture diagrams and all of that, and, and going through it and, and really giving them an idea of how this whole stuff clicks together and fits together and where the things are that they need to modify in order to achieve certain things. Not only from a plug-in perspective, but also from a core developer's perspective. And this is something that I figure I need to also do in terms of public documentation. Uh, so all of these, this internal knowledge of, of how everything works, of how releases get managed, of also of organizational stuff, administration stuff, all of this, this is currently just in my head and that needs to be out of there because not only me does it mean I'm a bottleneck, but also if I now get hit by a bus tomorrow, then this, this project is in, in deep poo. So um, that's something that needs to be changed. And I've neglected documentation for way too long now. Uh, I remember that when I created the plugin system, I was spending a significant amount of time on uh, writing docs and writing the whole plugin tutorial and all of that. But that was the last time I really committed to uh, working on documentation because it always felt like it was not appreciated. Uh, not an appreciated use basically of my time because uh, obviously it's cooler if I can say, uh, yeah, I added the following 50 new features in this Octoprint release rather than saying, yeah, I spent uh, uh, the, the whole development time of this release on improving the documentation, but also there are four new features. You understand? So, and this is something that um, needs to change now. So, um, because, uh, uh, yeah, I, I simply need to get all of this stuff out of my head so that others like you, all of you basically have access to it and can help if help is needed and help is always needed. And um, since getting this out of my head will be brain, will be brainful, yeah, brainful and painful enough already, I've also decided that it's time also to switch away from restructured text because frankly, that is driving me up the wall every time that I need to write documentation in there and rather find something with Markdown. So I'm taking a look at Mark make docs now and uh, we'll probably see that I, first of all, migrate everything that we already have over there before I start, yeah, doing a brain dump, basically. So um, be prepared that the next uh, Octoprint release will either be a long, long way out or will be significantly smaller than so far. Probably the latter, uh, the latter actually, because uh, I myself will spend a lot of time in the coming months to improve the docs, dump everything that is in my head somehow in there, in, in some shape or form at least, um, and uh, optimize stuff so that it, yeah, it, that basically the whole onboarding process is a bit less of a mess and a bit less painful for everyone uh, who wants to help. Uh, I might also, I'm not completely sure yet if I want to do that or not, and, and if I even can do that or not, but I might also include some recorded trainings uh, on, on various aspects. But yeah, this is something that I still am trying to figure out. And the overall goal here is really to make it easier for people to help and contribute in several shapes. So not necessarily code, but also do more docs, <laughs> uh, infrastructure, code reviews for PRs as well, where I'm currently a very, very large bottleneck. And that is really, really, really making me sad and whatever else. Um, and let me quickly check uh, the live chat again. Jim says, both from me and others, I've seen mentioned on Discord, the plugin docs are awesome and very much appreciated. I couldn't have 56 plugins without them. 56, Jesus, yeah. But yeah, see, so that that is something we're really committed to doing docs. And for the rest of Octoprint, this is simply completely missing. I mean, I have the, the API docs, the internal API docs, but they are also very, mm, 
and yeah this all needs to be improved but I understand that this is something where first of all I will need to do a lot of the the legwork because a lot of the stuff is still only in here and I need to how somehow at least dump it into something but yeah that would be the idea also uh joe joseph said uh writing unit tests that actually is also a point um there are some unit tests i mean there is a whole unit test suit in octoprint but the coverage of it could really be better i'm not sure it how much how many but it's definitely still under 50 percent and maybe 40 or so and that is something that also needs to change because if we have a good and strong unit test suit it means that if someone wants to contribute a code change to core and the unit tests turn red, they know what to do, hopefully at least, or, or where to look and, and, and how to fix it. And that will also make code reviews way faster because I do not have to manually review everything and figure out what it means, but I actually can just look at, or someone can just look at if the tests pass. And if so, then this is already a big thumbs up. So that is definitely something that we need. Um, yeah. So that is the first part, trying to do a brain dump, uh, making the whole docs uh, more, yeah, bigger. <laughs> more bigger, yeah, yeah. My, my English is great today, as you notice. Um, okay, so what, what is next? So um, consolidating tasks is actually also something that I, I, I plan to do because the problem is also right now a lot of the stuff that is not in code so not in in github issue trackers and not in um in the shape of uh, of, of pull requests or something like this is also up in here or in my todoist uh instance so to speak so in my, in, in in some private uh, task tracker and that is also something that needs to change so um anything that is something that not i only i can do so i, I cannot I also do not want to put stuff that is re re relevant to my tech situation and to my accounting and stuff like that into a public tra task tracker. But anything that is somehow related to Octoprint's infrastructure, to the uh, to the organization stuff, community management, all of this, this needs to be in a public tracker so that people see the load of work that is currently being done and that people can also chip in to help there where they, for example, maybe someone sees, oh, wait, uh, they want to do... Um, Oh, I don't know. They they want to do a a dev container for VS Code for Octoprint so that um, uh, people can uh, easier set up their own uh, their own development environment. Um, I've done this before. Let's just I I can contribute this. This would be amazing because this is one of these tasks on this to do list um, instance of mine, and uh, that 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 is something that would be lovely if if someone else could do it because it would be something that would really interest me to do. But yeah, I do not find the time to do it. So maybe if someone else would do it, that would also be great. Um, and yeah, so the goal here really is to make all the tasks visible and uh, hopefully motivate people to assist in getting them done as well. So they are not only uh, yeah, being piped through this bottleneck. So, and after that, I also expect to spend some time on coaching people through stuff, clarifying things further and dumping it in the logs. And um, uh, in general, just yeah, helping people to get up to speed. And then, of course, what the next step will be, will be delegating. So um, my hope is that at some point I will be able to offload a lot more things on the community as a whole than I'm now. And that might also mean that at first things get a bit more bumpy. So, for example, there might be a release where something is utterly and utterly broken because something went wrong somewhere and that is okay. That is something that might happen. And of course, we will do everything so that this does not happen, but it might happen. And this is something that should be everyone should be aware of, that this is the consequence of spreading things a bit further across more shoulders and, and, and establishing a process and establishing rules and uh, figuring out stuff and how to make something that so far only one person did work across a whole team of people. Um, that is, in my opinion, that is a price we will all have to pay for this to continue, though, because if we don't, sooner rather than later, I will have to make a choice between my health and Octoprint. And as sorry as it makes me to say that, in that case, my health will only win, uh, always win. And you really do not want to, uh, you, you really don't want that I have to make this choice. That was the word that I was looking for. Um, and I also want to uh, say that... Uh, 
While all of this means that I need some more commitment from the general community, I also want to give a shout out to all the people who have already stepped up and, and, and helped me a ton over the years and you know who you are. And I do not want to risk missing any names here, so I'm not saying any names and you know already who you are, I think. Um, because that has been a huge help and, and also especially during times like now where I'm feeling completely and utterly overwhelmed, it has helped a ton to know that I can simply join a, a, a private Discord room and, and, and talk to people and get all this doom talked about, uh, talked out of me again and get some encouragement. So, um, and also the one or other, uh, yeah, how, how, how would I say in, in German, I would say, uh, I'm uh, like, like, yes, get, getting my head stra set straight again. That was what I was looking for. Right. Um, uh, and and all of these people who are helping me already, they they are they also cannot take the whole burden of this because that would still be too much for even even spread across this number of shoulders. So we really need to have more people involved, and this is something that I hope to achieve by making it easier to onboard, by making it easier to contribute, to help in various shapes or forms, and by simply also knowing what is currently going on and maybe also moderating the the expectations <laughs> through that a bit like when people see yeah it's only three features missing for the next release but there is also like this epic load of other stuff that is currently going on then maybe the pressure will be a bit off myself as well uh to to just uh yeah to 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 just uh, to just perform and, and push out everything uh Joel just said he volunteers as tribute for the dev container. Good, that's your job now. And um, yeah. Uh, right, what I wanted to say is if you have always thought about becoming more involved in Octoprint's maintenance and development and uh, yeah, then you really want to closely monitor the issue tracker, the Discord and the, uh, the forums in the coming months because this is where I probably will uh, post updates about stuff that has changed stuff that is now public that is now visible that is now up for grabs and stuff like this so um that would be the point where you might be able to find something that you feel really passionate about passionate about contributing and hopefully do so and uh yeah then also commit to to maintain right so yeah okay that now was a long segment about my mental health and what it means for Octoprint and how to improve things and make them sustainable again. Uh, what else am I going to do next? Yeah, well, so this is actually something that I will hopefully do next week. And this is uh, uh, pushing a 181. So um, there was this issue reported with Octo4a and that is also now fixed on the bug fix branch. And then there was also an, another uh, cross-site scripting issue with the username and the user group name, a uh, group name on, on the access control. If you delete that, then you could get a, 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 an XSS trigger, but uh, both of these are fixed fixed now and ready for 181. And I will wait over the weekend if anything else comes in that needs pushing uh, of a bug fix, but uh, let's hope that not. And then I can simply push this out and be done with it. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, so that brings us to the next segment, which is a quick look at the stats. So let me quickly switch you over to here. And this is the anonymous usage tracking statistics of the past seven days. And what you really see quite well here is the release, which is marked here with this little green vertical line also something just unmuted itself somewhere i hear myself that is weird i'm going to simply ignore that um and what you also see is that i did the actual update tests for 18 uh, a day before on the 16th um because yeah i did that during this time here and what you see here this little spike here that went up to uh, four instances four concurrent instances uh, is my Octopi test cluster that I use for updating. And this is my update script uh, or me running through my update checklist and testing various ways and shapes and forms of updating from various versions of Octopi and Octoprint over to Octoprint 1.8.0. Uh, and then a day later, pretty much almost exactly 24 hours later. Nah, 
a bit less, 20, 21 hours or something. Uh, I released 180 and you see that we are now already at something like, um, confuses me a bit right now that, oh, that, that we are currently seeing something like 8,600 8, instances that have been online in the past 15 minutes or so. And uh, all in all, we've already seen um, 11K instances of 180. So 15% of the whole user base has already upgraded, which is a very good number for the for, for, for this time. Uh, I'm, I'm also curious to see how the records, <laughs> uh, uh, or, or rather how the how the hits against the pywheels.org repository will fare over the weekend, because uh, the last record on this uh, was set by an Octoprint release, though I cannot fully remember. I thought it was 1.4, but Charlie said last uh, yesterday, I think, on the Discord, it was maybe 1.7. But still, there is a current red line. If you look at, Pi at the pywheels.org uh, Twitter account, they post... Um, traffic stats every day and there is a record line up very very far up and that is octoprint <laughs> and uh yeah yesterday we are already at twice the um was it yesterday no sorry on tuesday we already caused them twice as many package downloads as usual and i want them before so they knew this was coming and um uh, every, everything is fine there, but uh, yeah, we are taking bets on uh, will we break the existing record and also uh, how many packages were downloaded yesterday. But I think maybe maybe the graph is already there and I did not yet see it, in which case you can also just look. But yeah, um, then uh, I'm going to quickly uh, give you just the screen without me because what you also see down here Oh, I should have resized the monitor, actually. Let me quickly do it like that, because then you actually can see this here down here. Um, this is the printed hours per version graph. And what you can see here is that with the release of 180, uh, the uh, amount of numbers printed under 180 started going down. So we are now at only uh, 2000 in the past 15. Uh, no, in the, uh, so two uh, prints completed. Whose, uh, whose, whose sum of durations were something like uh, 1,900, uh, I think that's minutes, over the past hour. And uh, uh, 180 is already at 1.3. So that is probably going to overtake it today still. And then the majority of people will already be printing under 180. So that is good. And uh, you already see that we are also in, in the last seven days, we had something like 652,000 hours, uh, minutes, hours, minutes, hours. Sorry, that was hours, not minutes. Okay, uh, that something like 652,000 hours were printed under 173, but already 57,400 under uh, 180. So there's progress there and there is upgrade activity going on. And that probably also means that this is indeed a stable release because given how little, um, yeah, how little uh, error reports we already had. Uh, and we usually have some because updates tend to fail. People suddenly crash uh, into weird uh, old issues with like like where where some package was installed in their environment which then caused them issues and stuff and all of that most of that is actually now gone because that was python 2 exclusive problems and we dropped python 2 now so that is really nice um and yeah that i'm also widely gesticulating at the screen and you are not even seeing that because i'm not there so yeah it makes more sense like this um yeah, so but but this overall looks like a very successful rollout and I'm quite happy to have waited that long and have given the the RC uh the R, the release candidate so much time for testing and also thank you to everyone again who helped testing these because that is also pretty amazing. We only had something like a bit over 1000 instances this time I think. No, 2000 all in all I think. There have been RCs with more uh, um activity but on the other hand we are also now entering this phase of the year where less people are using their printers than during the winter months and this is actually something that i noticed in the stats that we have a seasonal component there which i kind of can understand because uh, i'm sitting here in an office that is now at almost 31 degrees centigrade i cannot enable the ac while we are talking because i fear the noise would be a bit too much for you and the last thing that I want now, right now, is heating up a print bed. So um, 
uh, yeah, it's kind of understandable. And also outside is way nicer to be. And yeah, so that is probably why the print numbers are going down every summer. I've, I've been monitoring that every every summer now since I started with the anonymous usage tracking, which I think was with or was in 2018 or something. So, but it's interesting to see, really, really certainly. Yeah, but uh, okay, that was that. And also just so that you get an idea of this, it's been a bit nuked now because this year is the individual version statistics for 1.8.0. And yeah, before I released 1.8.0, you could see some nice graphs here where the, uh, wait, I can actually maybe switch back to this one where you can still see them. Give it some time to calculate. This is only the past 30 days also, not the past 60. And I need to switch this to off so it doesn't constantly try to reload. Ah, yeah. So here, what you hear, what you see here is actually the uh, only the, the release candidates of 1.0.8, uh, 1.8.0. And you see that the RC5 was constantly climbing up while all of the other ones were climbing down. And then suddenly here on um, May 17th, when I uh, around uh, 11 o'clock uh, Zulu, um, when I pushed out the new release, that started to dip down because people were updating to 181, uh, 180 is stable. Ugh. And switching back to the 180 statistics that also include the stable, you then see how the whole RC phase gets pretty much dwarfed by the actual stable release here. Uh, with uh, 8,800 um, instances now in the past hour. And also how the printing stats are getting dwarfed by this, because we came to something like 6.77, uh, 6.0, no, sorry, something like 182 um, hours per hour <laughs> printed uh, under RC5, and now we are more like in a, in a 2K range. So... Uh, there, there, there really is only a fragment of all Octoprint users who are partaking in the in the RC phase. What is also interesting here, I, at least that's something that I think is, um, during the RC phase we had something like half of the machines were idle at all times, uh, were actually offline at all times. Then, uh, yeah, another maybe third was was idle and only the rest of them was printing whereas now that uh, we have entered the stable phase uh, we have a third uh, 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 yeah a third 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 mix uh, uh, split here going on so third of the printers are printing a third of the printers are idle and a third of the printers are disconnected so it's interesting that apparently people testing RCs are printing less than people who are running stable versions but on the other hand that also maybe makes sense because I would expect that most people who install um, who install the the um, uh, the RCs maybe do not so on their production machine. Uh, also, something that I want to quickly check. Switching back to sorry, that was wrong. Switching back to yeah, I was already at the right spot. Crap! Ah, oh, that was stupid. Okay, wait. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah. Um, uh, something that I added to the latest. Uh, Pi support plugin, which the latest Octoprint uh, 180 now also depends on, is this um, this extraction of the Octopi up to date build number, and uh, that now also gives me an idea of what images are actually being used in in production. And it turns out that this last build from March uh, of 173 has significant significantly more users than the one from January. And also that the one that I pushed out uh, with the release uh, is already at 549 actively used instances. So that is also really nice to see because it also gives me an idea of what hardware combinations, not, not sorry, not hardware, uh, what, what Octopi combinations basically we have to work with. Um, also what kernel and stuff. Yeah. So that would be the idea here. And whoops, I did not want to zoom in there. Ah. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, and this was the stats. Which would now usually mean we are doing the Q&A segment, but as I said, we do not have any questions in the backlog. So the question is, uh, the question for the question. Um, do you have anything to say, to add, to discuss, to I don't know what now, because all of you watching this live now have the chance for that. 
everyone only watching this as a recording doesn't. So um, I give you some time to think about this and possibly write something down. Uh, in the meantime, let me quickly say that, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I think it's important that we talk about these things that I talked about here today. Um, it's something that still is not too easy for me to do because I always feel a bit like I'm admitting failure and shortcomings and weakness. And that is obviously something that our culture kind of teaches us is always a bad thing to do and only makes us vulnerable and all of that. But personally, I think it's important to talk about mental health and also to talk about when things get tough and when things become un unsustainable and then finding solutions for this. And um, so I hope you will understand where I'm coming from with this and this that this is in no shape in no way or shape something that I meant as an accusation of the community or anything like that, but that it was just something that I needed to get off my, off my chest to make transparent here, to also explain why things have been slower than usual the past two years, especially, and um, why I also now need to shift my focus a bit on something that might not immediately give you new features and not new stuff to play or something like that. Um, so yeah, that was that. And also I think, so for me personally, whenever I struggle with what I struggle with right now, it has helped me a ton to see that other people struggle as well and that it is, and, and talk about it and somehow find ways to cope. And that it is not something that should be that invisible as it is in our, in our community right now. So here I am talking about it and uh, I hope you take it the way it is meant. Okay, uh, Joe asks, if you had no limit on time and resources, what would you like to do with Octoprint except a total refactor? Wait, why Why are you accepting that? <laughs> because that is actually the first thing that I would do. Um, the thing is that the, the code base has grown now since for, for almost 10 years, uh, pretty much organically in some places, and that is something that I would really like to fix. But um, yeah, the most pressing thing really for me, that, that the thing that I'm still very much focused on finally doing is the new com layer, is uh, a new UI, because the UI is also 10 years old now, and uh, there is a, a ton of interesting stuff that could be done there. Um, and yeah, also find solutions to, I don't know. I don't know how to put that right now. Um, so over the years, I've, I've seen, I've, I've had a lot of people uh, ask about how 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 to use Octoprint with I don't know some other hardware with DNCs, with lasers, with whatnot. And if I had unlimited resources and and with resources, I don't not not only mean time but also money, so that I can hire people. <laughs> um, then I would also try to find a way to make it even more flexible, more modular, um, like make it some kind of web interface that does not only target one 3D printer, but multiple manufacturing devices, uh, be it what what the, what it be like a laser cutter and CNC I don't know a a, 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 a CNC controlled lathe uh, what not something like that and and model all of that abstractly and so so with regards to data modeling in that case this is something that I find very interesting for some weird reason and um, that is something that I would love to do um, but I don't really see it happening in the near future but this is actually something that I've kind of been also preparing with the uh, new com layer but uh, more like there are there are some mechanisms in there that hopefully have not made it so that I would need another complete refactor of that in order to make it work, but rather like uh, um, uh, like uh, um, I forgot my train of thought because I saw the chat. Uh, <laughs> Wiesel asks uh, if I could show you Timothy. I cannot because Timothy is not here right now. But I can fetch Timothy. Give me a give me a second. I'll fetch Timothy. <clears throat> yeah. So for all of you who are now very much wondering who the fuck is sorry, I should not maybe say this word. <laughs> who the heck is Timothy? This is Timothy. Timothy is a little plush donkey that I got uh, on the tail end of my knee surgery episode last year. And he has helped me a ton during uh, physical therapy. 
uh, and uh, and also given me the energy that I needed to cope with everyone, like my my surgeon and my doctor and my physiotherapist telling me that I s simply needed more patience with myself <laughs> because, yeah, um, uh, because uh, I was severely running out of patience. And as you can maybe see here and here and uh, and also there where you have a little band-aid and there and and also the little, oops, uh, the little blue eye that he has there. Timothy has seen a lot. <laughs> And uh, thus, uh, Timothy is able to, like, I, I only have to look at him. I'm, I'm already seeing, like, he's still here, so I'm also still here. And this is why I have Timothy. And Timothy now also has his own Mastodon account. So, um, yeah, Timothy is, is, is an internet star or is becoming one <clears throat> now more than ever. Yeah. So if you're looking at my Twitter at some point and you're seeing a little plush donkey, then now you know his name. It's Timothy. And there, he, there you have it. Okay. Any more questions? Oh, also maybe just because I can, I also have a sloth mounted to my microphone boom that I got from a good friend of mine for my birthday this year. <laughs> and he's called Flash because first of all, Zootopia, also because irony, and then to Flash in, uh, in, in, in bouldering slang basically means managing a, a, a climbing problem on the very first attempt. And that is something that I try to do, of course, usually fail to, but try to do. So, yeah. Did I mention that I collect plushies? It's a thing. Okay, any more questions? Uh, Charlie says that he played with make dogs for less than an hour and it seems easier to work than RST things. Yeah, that is precisely my goal, uh, my 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 um, my point. That you 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 didn't uh, know about that yet because you only joined later. But uh, I said earlier that I want to switch the doc system because um, this this restructured text stuff is frankly bringing me to tears and uh, it's just way less intuitive than Markdown for writing. So. And considering that I will have to write a whole ton of stuff, I think it would be really nice to maybe make sure that tooling is up for that first before I slowly lose my sanity trying to dump all of this in restructured text and rather go with Markdown. So that is something that I'll tackle. Yeah, I mean, next week I'll, I'll also have to go, go with 181 probably. And next week will also be a bit of a short one because Thursday is a public holiday. My Fridays are off anyhow. And also on Saturday I will binge watch all of Stranger Things 4, which will already be out. So the first half of the season with my best friend. Um, But either next week or the week after we'll probably already start on that. So um, that was that. Yeah. Okay. So any more questions? or anything else that you want to add or something like this. I'm sorry, this this whole thing was maybe a bit of a downer, but eh, it needed to be done. It needed to be said. People needed to be briefed on what's going on and uh, make it clear instead of keeping it intransparently uh, wrapped up undercover. Okay nothing in the chat so uh wish me luck tomorrow because i have an uh, a consultation uh, an appointment at a bike store because i intend to buy an e-bike in order to drive less with my combustion engine and instead ride more with my legs but since i also want to use it to drive over to the boulder gym or rather to ride over to the boulder gym which is like 20 kilometers one way i decided maybe an e-bike would be a good idea because if i don't have an e-bike then by the time i arrive at the boulder gym i will not be able to climb anymore so um that is currently the goal here. And yeah, so tomorrow a lot of money will leave my wallet probably, but I hopefully will also have a shiny new e-bike. I mean, if, if the money leaves my wallet and I don't have the e-bike, then something went really, really, really wrong and I was mugged. But let's hope it doesn't come to that. I, I'm also taking my partner with me. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Also, I will probably tell all of you all about that on social media, whether you want to or not. So uh, brace for that, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, in that case, nothing in the chat anymore. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks for being here then. I hope it was interesting. May maybe not as, as, as fun as usual, but still. 
Um, and uh, the next one of these will hopefully also be with something like four to six weeks. I'm not committing to anything right now. Sorry for that. Um, but uh, yeah, until then, I hope you stay healthy and uh, your filament spools do not tangle and uh, you have a good time and also maybe enjoy the sun here and there. Go for a bike ride, <laughs> play with your plushies. I don't know. Uh, all in all, just stay healthy, have a good time and happy printing as always. And just with the church bells starting to toll, I'm saying bye bye. <laughs>